Business Brain, the show for entrepreneurs, episode 444 for Friday, April 28th, 2023. Greetings, folks, and welcome to Business Brain, the show where we take all kinds of scenarios, we run them through our business brains or your business brains, the business brain, the collective business brain, to try and get the right perspective or a different perspective, sometimes a better perspective, to help us with our lives, our businesses, and more. Sponsors for this episode include thinkific.com slash business brain, where you can go to get one month of Thinkific Plus for free. We'll talk about what that means in a few minutes here. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, on Casual Friday, it's Dave Hamilton. Hey, and this is Shannon Jean out in sunny California. I love that think, uh, think rific or think if yeah, is, uh, you know, it, it's really an interesting concept. We probably do a, a big chunk of a show maybe in the coming weeks, just talking about this, this idea of taking the knowledge that you've acquired in your small business over time and monetizing it in an entirely different way than perhaps you thought. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going I'm to put that in our notes to talk about All right. it. Yeah, just just listening to you and looking at it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, awesome. All right. So Shannon, sometimes this becomes business therapy here. Uh, yes. And I have a little, I have a, a story to share that hopefully is a, uh, a lesson for all of us. I like to go to the flotation tank, uh, frequently. Oh, okay. I, I actually have a membership at a, a place near me where I go once a month to the tank. And I love it because it's that downtime, right? It's an hour of Great. no input. And I, I have no idea what I'm going to think about while I'm in the tank. And some, I, but a lot of it is I just have to let the thoughts go. If I try to, if I, if, you know, a thought comes to my brain and I don't like it and I try to push it out, oh man, that's what the next hour is about, right? Mm, I have to yeah. just sort of let it flow and let it process. I can I cannot engage with it, but it, I just kind of have to let it, you know, flow out completely. And then the next one comes and hopefully by, you know, the 45 minute mark or so, no more thoughts come into my head. And then I get like 15 minutes of what I call clear headedness, which is wonderful. Right. But you have to kind of let it's all cool. the thoughts come in order, Difficult. in order to yeah. get there. It's yeah, it's a, it's definitely a, 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 uh, something to practice and, and I like right. it. It's good. The last yeah. time I was in the tank, a thought came to me and it was at the moment it came to me, it was so obvious that I should do this. And yet also so, uh, so painfully obvious why I had not. Uh, and the thought was, Hey, you know, you, I sold, uh, the Mac observer last year to, um, to, to another company, the, the, the guy yep. I, I dealt with this, this company, his name was Sir hot is Sir hot still is. Uh, yeah, we talked about it on the show. Exactly. Cool. Yep. yep. And uh, I was the one that handled all the negotiations and, and all of that stuff. And I thought, wait a minute now. And he then wound up selling it. It was not his plan to sell it so quickly. There were some things that happened in his life and an offer, like someone who was very interested in it showed up. Uh, I don't know about uh, 10 months after he, he bought it from us, somebody that had wanted it from us 10 years ago, but didn't have the money now did. And he wound up selling it. And so uh, I thought, man, I negotiated with this guy for months, uh, you know, putting this deal together. It wasn't a months long negotiation, but that was part of it. And the rest was just structuring the deal and doing the handoff and all of that stuff. I'm like he knows some of the mistakes I made and I already paid for those. You know, we call mistakes our tuition here, right? So that, because that's yeah. how we learn. And also, as I always joke, but it's 100% true, I like calling them my tuition because that's how I justify having paid for them. And I thought, any mistakes I made, I already paid for them, prepaid tuition. However, I have not gotten the lessons yet. I don't, I know some of the mistakes I made. He knows more. He, you know, hmm. how was, how was it negotiating with me? Did, would he have given up more? Would, you know, what, like, yeah. what, what was that? And I thought, man, the, and we, he and I maintain a fantastic relationship to this day. There is the only, I was going to say, there's no reason for me not to call him and ask him that question. 
Uh, the only reason for me not to call him and ask him that question is, of course, my very, very, very fragile ego. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You're and, right. Uh, right. And so I thought, well, that's a stupid reason. I've literally already paid the tuition on this. Nothing's going to change. I need to call him. And so I did. And he's a he's a nice guy. He's always been very respectful. And uh, and and it took a while. We, uh, we probably chatted for like an hour and it wasn't just about this. We chatted about a lot of different things. And, uh, and, uh, you know, I asked him, I said, so, you know, what mistakes did I make? So, oh no, you were perfect. I'm like, okay, well, that's really nice. I didn't call you, uh, to have my ego inflated. In fact, fact, it was kind of the opposite. Uh, but you know, that's really nice of you to say. I'm like, are you sure? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I could hear there was some hesitation because he's a nice guy. He doesn't want to insult me, you you know? And I'm like, right. Most people don't. Right. right." I'm like, no, 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 this is actually. And I, I said to him, I'm like, this is actually why I called you. I, like we'd already been talking for maybe 30 or 40 minutes at this point. I'm like, this is the real reason. Like, this is it. I want to know. I'm like, it's not going to change anything, but I, you know, but it might help me down the road. It might help you too. I don't know. And, and he hemmed and hawed and I could tell he still didn't want to insult me. And he, the, what he said was, you know, the, there was one thing and I'm like, yeah, great. He says, um, you're a nice guy. And I let that hmm. sink for a second. And I'm like, okay, I, I know exactly what he's saying, you know? And, and, yeah. and it was, I could have pushed harder on him. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I could have negotiated harder with him. He probably feels like, and perhaps correctly so that he uh, was the better negotiator in that, in that scenario. I'm like, okay, good to know. Good to know. Thank you. And I, I did, I thanked him for it. He, he's like, but I don't know that that's a bad thing. I'm like, no, no, I don't, I don't no, know that that's a bad thing either. I, yeah, yeah. but it's there's good to know. To pay. It is right. good to know, but there's also a value in um, the relationship that you kept. Absolutely. Uh, and being able to revisit that. And so, of course, I'm rationalizing it because I think I'm a nice guy as well. And I know that <laughs> I, but I have made more money leaving money on the table for other people more in my life, I think, than anything else. Yep. Yep. I, and I, I, same, like my, my whole focus in business has yeah. been, at least the successful businesses I've had, has been in yeah, helping sure. other people with whatever they need. And if I prioritize them, you know, there's always a little something left over for me. They and come that, back. Yeah, yeah. And they come back to you. Yes. It, it's, it's, um, it's, I find it's much, it's more difficult now to, to do some of that relationship management because the internet has just kind of depersonalized much of the transactions that I've been involved in um, buying and selling and things. But when you can have a direct relationship with someone like you have with uh, Sir Hot, it's valuable and you never know what's going to come back to help you down the road. You just have no idea. Ooh, that means I get to tell you about our sponsor. Think if it, As a business owner, you know that to grow your company and retain your current customers, you need to keep them engaged. And that's why we're here telling you about Thinkific Plus. It's essential. Thinkific Plus provides businesses like yours with a powerful, easy-to-use educational platform to keep your customers, vendors, partners, and employees informed and trained. Keeping people engaged, giving them information, training them about your company – keeps them coming back. So many businesses and organizations rely on Thinkific Plus, like the company Later, the leading Instagram platform for businesses and creators to schedule and plan their marketing strategies. Later needed a more interactive way to introduce users to their tool and features, helping them find success on the platform and apply strategies to their own businesses and then turn them into loyal customers, right? They had already created content for online webinars and resources across their website, so they simply uploaded them to Thinkific Plus and had their course up and running within a week. Since launching, later users' adoption of new features has increased by over 450%, and their customer retention and paid plan purchases have each increased over 300%. Thinkific Plus can help with your business, too. What are you waiting for? Start educating your customers at scale with Thinkific Plus. And right now, our listeners here at Business Brain, you get a free month of Thinkific Plus, but only when you go to our special URL, 
thinkific.com slash businessbrain. Start your free month of Thinkific Plus at thinkific.com slash businessbrain. And our thanks to Thinkific Plus for sponsoring this episode. All right. Well, while we are uh, continuing to look for more examples of prepaid tuition, uh, I had an interesting experience today, Shannon. I was on a conference call. It was a Zoom call. Right. Yep. And uh, it was just a, a kind of a, we do a, it's not quarterly. It's more maybe every six weeks or so, one ad agency we work with. Just have a, a you know, a standing call to just make sure we're not missing anything from each other. Right. And it's usually, yeah. it's booked for a half hour. It usually runs about 15 to 20 minutes. And, and that's that. And it's, it's always super valuable. Today, in addition to the people that I expected to see, you know, little Zoom windows for, I saw a Zoom window for uh, one of the people on the call. And it said her name and uh, otter.ai. And so clearly this otter.ai engine was joined into the Zoom call. It's the first time I'd yeah, seen this. Right. Uh, they were recording it. I knew it was being recorded. So this it didn't feel like an invasion or anything. It's, you know, but it was really interesting. After the call, I got an email from Otter saying you've been invited to uh, see the transcript and edit the transcript of the call. But it also gave me a uh, maybe eight or nine uh, item agenda that Otter had sorted out by itself of the different topics that we covered and timestamps as to when we covered those. And it wasn't perfect um, because we weren't having a conversation where it was like, and now we will move to the next item. It was just yeah, a free yeah. flowing, you know, or four of us on the call and it was just, you know, ideas were flowing back and forth. But man, it was close enough that if I read even just that agenda a month from now, I would know I would be reminded of the things that we talked about. And certainly if it was important, I could go in and and tweak the, you know, the few things that were not quite on the mark. But yeah, that's huge. Huge, right? I, I'd it never seen it before. And and evidently it's a thing. You you know, Otter has a it's otter.ai slash zoom is where you can go and yeah. uh and and you know, see how it works and all that stuff. But yeah, I, I love it. You know, yeah, it, we're going to be talking about AI, AI all the time because as solopreneurs and small business owners, having these kind of tools at your fingertips, are it, it's going to change everything. So the more you learn about this now, as things are really ramping up, uh, the better off your business is going to be. That I, I use an app called Rewind.ai. Yep. Uh, it only works on the Mac right now, but... Um, uh, they're coming out with other ones, but it tracks everything on my computer, keeps everything local. When I say track, it takes screenshots of what I'm working on during the day. It tracks meetings like you're, you just discussed with the Otter. And the beauty of it, everything is searchable. So whether it's something in a photo, something on the web, if I'm like, gosh, where did I hear that conversation from? And I search it, it'll go back. And it's almost, if you have a Mac, if you're familiar with Time Machine, it uses a similar interface where it goes back and finds that. Um, I love it. it. It you know getting that like if you get that audio in even just an MP3 file, we use uh, for here at Business Brain we use a service called Swell.ai, and uh, it converts that to articles, searchable databases, chat bots, all kinds of stuff. Um, it's amazing. I mean, the future is bright with this stuff. It's going to be incredible. It's it's crazy. Yeah, we we also use a service called Whisper. Uh, hmm. that generates a transcript. This is the transcript that you would see if your podcast player supports the new podcasting 2.0 uh, transcripts. I know quite a few of you are listening using the Fountain app, and and that's one of them that that supports that. Uh, and it'll it, it essentially just pops the transcript up like closed captions, which can be really handy for a variety of reasons. Uh, but that's yeah. that's on uh, on every episode that we do too. So yeah, it's it's fascinating. Um, what all the tech that's, that's available. If you're not yet learning, if you haven't yet started to use AI, go play my, the, the, the thing, yeah. the, the, the best advice I can give you is go sign up for an account at chat GPT. We'll put a link in the show notes. You could, you could use Google Bard or Microsoft Bing's AI, but sign up for one of these chat bots. They are free. Uh, chat GPT is probably the simplest one and probably the best one to play with and literally just play with it. You know, I, I had it 
write a response to my wife. She had made orange juice for us. And so I, I said, uh, please write a response that thanks my wife uh, for making orange juice. And, I, and then I said, get as sappy as, you know, get really sappy with it. And it did. It wrote me this like four paragraph, super sappy thing. And then I said, all right, you know, rewrite that uh, as a limerick. And it did. Oh, that's cool. It, right. But just yeah. just play literally playing with it because you will learn th there's the um, especially the chatbots, you know, there's the 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 G. I, for, I always forget what the P stands for, but the G and the T are the important parts. And I'm not just talking about the gin and tonic. I uh, the, mm -hmm. the G is the generative part where it's not just going on the Internet and finding something somebody else had already written. It's generating this uh, on the fly. And then the T is where it really gets better. The T stands for transformative. That's me saying, OK, you've created this thing. Now transform it into a limerick, transform it into this. Yeah. Add it's tweak. threaded, right? You can, yeah, yeah, it's great. You get to tweak the results, which is something you don't get to do with a search engine, right? So experimenting yep. and just learning how to use that, uh, super valuable because you're going to use it in your business. Um, yeah, it's it's absolutely, you're going to use it. I mean, I've been experimenting with it for uh, product titles oh, and yeah. product descriptions. And I would have been going back and forth on the best way to what prompts to use. And that, that's a key thing is learning how to use a prompt. It's almost like asking a question in Google, but it, it, it's different. Uh, you know, I, I say, you know, you're an SEO expert, search engine optimization, create a, uh, you know, a product title for this item and create a description, 500 words or less. And then I would ask it, I would say, are you just copying this from the manufacturer's website? And, and chat GPT said, no, no, uh, this is based on search terms and this and that. So, you know, uh, I have to think that things like this are going to be tremendously helpful to get your, you know, products surfaced higher in search and, uh, other areas like that. I, I think the sky's the limit. I, I want to highlight something you just said there in your example, a, 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 a perfect use of the transformative nature of these things where you said, act like you are a, an SEO expert. Yes. That like, that's literally what you type into this first, yep. say, act like you're an SEO expert, press return, and then put in your query. It will remember that you told it to act like that and the results that you get will be based on that. It doesn't hurt to remind it eight to 10 queries later. Yes, you said that at the beginning, but it it prioritizes the most recent things you've asked for over the first thing you asked for. So it, you can even say, remember, you're an SEO expert. Answer this question that way. And and it will. It'll you know, incredible. It's incredible. I mean, think about this. Yeah, this this audio aspects. What about recording meetings that you're having with your team or your staff or whatever, and then being able to uh, turn that meeting content into a searchable or a chat bot for your internal use? So somebody who missed the meeting could say, what did I learn? What did I miss? Yeah. And have have the AI come and say, well, here's here's the top five points. Here's the summary. Yeah. Uh, Dave said this, Shannon suggested that, and gives you a complete summary of of what happened and went on. Um, that's the future. You, you, I don't think when your customers find you and come to your e-commerce platform or your stores, if you have one, they're going to want to ask some questions. And you need to be in, to intelligently direct and answer those questions to present the product that they want. Because they maybe they know what they want, but they're going to have a dialogue about it. They're gonna, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right, folks, let us know how you're using AI feedback at businessbrain.show. Could be your personal life. Could be how, examples of how you've played with it. Because just seeding that idea in our brains helps our business brains. But yeah, send in your ideas. Send in how you've used it, how it's succeeded for you, how it has failed for you. You really want to know feedback at businessbrain.show. Dot show and uh, as always if your email is featured in an episode you are entered to win a macbook air that we're giving away this year here in 2023 make sure to check out thinkific.com slash business brain and get your one month of thinkific plus for free keep living that charmed life and uh, see you next week hey i have one more tip for you today before you go 
If you want to learn about the most powerful customer service concept on the planet, the next podcast you listen to should be episode 118 of Business Brain, where we first introduce the concept of two tokens. Two tokens will turn your customer service department upside down and change how you solve problems. It's simple, easy to implement and teach, and it will thrill your customers. So have a listen. Search for the number 118 at businessbrain.show or click the link in the show notes of this week's episode. And cheers to your success.